what's going on YouTube and welcome back here to another day here in the empty park server and today we are continuing touring Walt Disney World in Epcot and today we're looking at the Living Seas Pavilion which currently houses Nemo the seas with Nemo and friends but there is a lot of backstory to this pavilion as well we're gonna go over some of that here today so the opening of the seas actually was um, it was a long time ago guys it was a long time ago looking back I'm sorry to age some people but this pavilion opened January 15th of 1986 and this is an old area and this actually used to be called the Living Seas Pavilion it opened with the park and oh, okay good you can go in here I was a little bit nervous that you couldn't go in here it is extremely dark. Am I supposed to go in here? What is going on here? Why is it so dark in there? That is really strange. Brightness, let's see if that'll fix it. Yeah, it is extraordinarily dark in there. Um, I mean, I guess it is in real life, but it is like really, really dark. Um, yeah, so this opened as the Living Seas, and it used to house an attraction called, um, I think it was called, I'm trying to remember what it was called now. I think it was called Alpha Centauri or something like that. But basically, you would, instead of riding in a clam mobile like you do today, the area was um, Sea Base Alpha, Journey to Sea Base Alpha. Um, and there you would learn about the world's ocean, taking a sea cab, um, and you got to see the 5.7 million gallon Caribbean Coral Reef Aquarium. And now today you obviously have the Nemo attraction, you have more Nemo theming in here. And it, I looked back at the video the other day, the old attraction was very boring. Like if that was still existing today, I know people don't love the Nemo IP in here, but compared to what it used to be, it, it was really, it was a snore fest. Like Disney had to do something with this area. They really didn't have much of a choice. So, you know, the way I kind of look at this area is I, I love aquariums. I have my own aquariums. I keep fish and things like that. So this area is a very cool area to me. But it, I don't know, it just seems way too similar to something you could find in real life. Um, it's not, it, it seemed to have the Disney difference a little bit, but it's just one of those things that doesn't like really, really entice me to the point where I'm like, oh, that is so different than any other aquarium, right? And I think that's one of the downfalls of this area. As much as I love that stuff, it is not my favorite pavilion by any means, because I do still feel like it's lacking the Disney difference in this area. That is really cool how they did that. Um, and then of course, the much controversial and infamous turnover in 2003, um, Finding Nemo debuted. Um, and this inspired new attractions like Turtle Talk with Crush and The Seas with Nemo and Friends, which opened in 2006. So, for, so in 2004, it was Turtle Talk with Crush. And then in 2006, so two years later, we got to see kind of the re-embarkation of the Sea Cab, now in the Clam Mobile, as the seas with Nemo and friends and today the pavilion is home to the same attractions plus Bruce's shark world which is a pretty much you just stick your head inside Bruce and pretend you're getting eaten um, and it also has a bunch of finding Nemo characters the pavilion's aquarium has grown to include more than 6,000 inhabitants with sea turtles dolphins rays and other creatures of the deep now there was also rumors when Finding Dory came out, we could potentially see some sort of transition to, you know, the, um, I think it's called the Marine Life Institute or something like that, which was in Finding Dory. And at this point that has not happened yet, that transition, but there is always the rumors that we could see something like that in Disney World. And I think eventually when they do eventually update this, they will eventually update it to the Marine Life Institute. And um, I think that's just inevitable. But I think Disney is focusing on other areas of Epcot. I would say right now, as much as Finding Nemo needs an update, it's not 
the highest importance. I would say, you know, fixing the Imagination Pavilion, fixing, you know, whatever they're going to do with with areas in in the other parks. Um, I think in terms of Epcot, like I said, I would say Nemo is probably maybe third or fourth on the list in reality, and um, I think Disney realizes that. Um, like I said, these were all pretty cool because you actually get to see the fish swimming around and you get to see the projections of the characters on the glass. But in person, it actually looks like they're in the tank with the fish. And it is one of those things that, um, you know, that, that I will say is one of the Disney differences that is pretty cool. And um, like I said, overall, it's, it's pretty much a simple area. You know, they used to have Mickey Mouse actually like scuba diving in the aquariums which was really cool. Um, if you look at the bottom of one of the areas of the aquarium, they have the shells or rocks arranged as a hidden Mickey. So that's another kind of interesting touch. And, um, you know, on the outside, they used to have a beautiful mural of the seas. And eventually that turned into, I think, what they have now, which is like a Finding Nemo um, mural. And it looks like they just recently touched that up earlier this year. Like I said, you know, this is an area that I think a lot of people do avoid unless they have little kids that love Nemo. And it is nice to see a Nemo attraction in Disney World. Um, you know, and like I said, this is actually the area that shoots them into the aquariums, which is cool. And this is a really nice area. And I think, you know, not enough people really take the time to explore and really enjoy it for what it is. You've got like seahorses and little crustaceans and crabs and things like that this is yeah this is the bruce attraction here bruce's world that's that's pretty cool i think this is a nice little touch that they added um that's kind of fun i'll admit it that's kind of fun so yeah this is bruce's sub house and then of course you have turtle talk with crush over here which is an interactive experience you basically get to talk with crush and i've actually never done this attraction um you know, to be honest, I'm I'm a little bit older, and I don't really want, I don't really want Crush talking to me, <laughs> in all honesty. But it is nonetheless, it's it's perfect for little kids and is a fun attraction. Now, obviously, you get to see all the aquariums and everything here. It is really, really impressive, um, just the the magnitude and the scale of this aquarium, just how big it is. And I'd be remiss if I didn't leave out, which I'm hoping to do on my next trip to Disney World, which is the, if you exit, I think this is the gift shop, there you go. So here, of course, like anything Disney, you have the gift shop at the end, which has a ton of Nemo stuff. But also on the other side of this pavilion, and uh, like I said, I've never done this before, I'm hoping to next time and over here you've got like a little Photoshop you could take pictures with Dory Nemo things like that um, is the Coral Reef restaurant which is another really nice touch and something I'd like to do here in the future and basically you get to sit in the restaurant I've never actually been inside so this is my first time actually going in the restaurant it seems like a pretty small restaurant and of course in here you've got the um, You've got the little seating area, and you get to look at the fishies while you eat a fish. I think that's a perfectly uh, acceptable thing. But it's definitely more higher-end dining in this park, so definitely keep that in mind if you do eat there. A lot of people say it's kind of a hit-or-miss restaurant, and it is quite expensive. Also over here, which isn't open yet, but part of this whole living nature or world nature area, um, they're currently building Moana, so hopefully in the future we'll be able to explore the new splash pad and get to see all the new stuff with Moana in this park. And that kind of, I guess, sort of aligns with the Living Seas. I guess if there's one area in Future World where it would somewhat fit would be over here, but I think a lot of people are upset that they added this over here. And hopefully it'll be done soon so we can actually explore it. But this is where Moana is, and this is the current construction of that area. So that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I hopefully, maybe you learned a thing or two about the living seas and the history of this area. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys again next time. Peace out, guys.